Good morning. It is February 21st in Zone 9A. And I'm going to do a quick update of the greenhouse and the garden. We got our first good spring day after all the rain yesterday. So I was able to plant out um, a lot of things that I have been having in my greenhouse and waiting for the rain and the cold weather to pass. Um, so I'll go ahead and start in the greenhouse and I'll show you the other one and then we'll look at the garden. So here are my uh, cocktail tomatoes. They are putting on some ripe fruit. I just gave them a good prune yesterday because they were completely wild and you couldn't hardly tell what where each branch was coming from and there was no airflow so I think I'm going to get a lot of growth now uh, it's going to be a lot healthier you can see it has a million little baby tomatoes on there and flowers and on that one as well i counted at least 30 tomatoes on that one plant yesterday so i got the greenhouse open because it is it was warm yesterday um, i was going to close it last night but i forgot but it, it wasn't cold last night it was probably 40 something degrees so my plan for today is to up pot some tomatoes and plant some corn and possibly some pumpkins so what we got going on right here is some uh, turkish orange eggplants here and then i got some white cherry and canary tomato plants here um, some more canaries and white cherries and Constoluto Genovese, more of the same uh, with some Chef's Choice and Juliet and Dr. Witchy. More Dr. Witchies, more uh, Constoluto Genovese. That's the first time um, growing that variety. It's also the first time that I'm growing the white cherries, the Chef's Choice, um, the Canary Yellows, and a few more varieties I'll show you. So those are all new to me this year. And then of course the Dr. Witchies um, is a favorite that I grow every year. So in here we got some, uh, some more Chef's Choice, some Kellogg's, which is a favorite of mine that I grow each year. Juliet, which is a grape red tomato um, that I've grown a few years um, that does really well. Napa Chardonnay, I tried it um, for the first time last year and it did remarkably well so it got put on the favorite list so and then here I got a German Queen which came out of um, three tomatoes that I got from um, Lowe's and I've never tried the German Queens before so that's the first time for that one and then I have some daddle peppers back there that I up potted and then this little section here is kind of an exciting moment for me this is all of my squash um, it's my summer squash and my winter squash so in here I've planted um, the spaghetti the burpee spaghetti squash plants that I planted last year but these were seeds that I saved from the ones that I grew um, the Peter Pan dwarf um, patty pan squash this is a summer squash I grew last year that did very well the first time I ever really did really good with some squash and uh, it's not coming up very well so i might have to get some more seeds or we might just work with whatever we get um the uh, i really don't have any more of those seeds so um partial eclipse squash um i got these from hall's tools i did try to grow them last year but it was too late when i got a hold of the seeds so they didn't do anything um i have to plant my squash really early and cover them with row covers to get them to do what they need to do before the bugs hit and then um, Small Wonder Squash, this is a small spaghetti squash type from Haas Tools. And I had read and seen where other people were growing it and said that it was super prolific. So I wanted to trial that um, with the, um, the spaghetti squash that I grew last year. Um, and the Alexandria Squash, also from Haas Tools. This is a small green um, zucchini type squash and of course I had to grow it because it's Alexandria squash and 
This one is the gold prize, and I was trying to decide between the different varieties. Haas has a few um, yellow varieties, and pretty much they rave about all of them, but I went with the gold prize this year, and I'll, next year I'll try something else, but this is supposed to be a super prolific yellow squash that has a lot of female flowers. And then here is my spaghetti squash. Um, I grew these from the save seeds as well from the burpee seeds from the, the squash that I grew last year. And then I have some early straight neck yellow from MI Gardener, which is a, just a straight neck yellow squash. And then here are my North Georgia candy roasters from Baker Creek. And I'm super excited about these. I've never grown that type of squash before. And I am excited to see all the different things that I can do with them. And then wrapping up the squash, I have a buttercup squash from Baker Creek, a scalloped yellow and a scallop white from M.I. Gardener, and the some more of the buttercup from Baker Creek. So that is all my squash. Um, I don't think I'm going to be planting any more squash <clears throat> unless, you know, this, these same varieties again in a couple of weeks. So that's what we got going on with the squash. And then down here is more of the rest of my tomatoes. Um, great white tomatoes I got from M.I. Gardener. First time trying those. Jubilees, also from M.I. Gardener. Never grown the Jubilee before. Some more of the Genovese. Some orange cherry tomatoes. Okay, so this here, this here, this here, and these are the um, cherry tomatoes that I started from the, the seeds uh, or from the actual cherry tomatoes I bought from Whole Foods in a medley and these are the black cherry ones these are the red grape ones these are some the yellow cherry ones and then these back here are orange so I only used half of the seeds from each one of those cherry tomatoes and these are all the the, the um, tomato plants that came up from that. So, if you're having trouble getting a hold of seeds, you can just plant one from the grocery store and you will get a million tomato plants from that. So, and you will get to enjoy them. And then in here, I just started some more Kellogg's because I didn't get as many um, starts when I started them at first. It was a little bit too cold. I'm trying to start some more Napa Chardonnay, some Sweeties, and some Wolverines. And then here's some more Great Whites. And then this is banana peppers. And then back here are the ones I got from Heritage Seed, the Bayou Moon, the Moldovan. Both of those are like a green and yellow um, tomato. The, uh, let's see, Mark Twain. Okay, that is a, um, that is a large beefsteak type. And then there's some Artema peppers, which are a yellow pepper that are sweet uh, with a hot one thrown in every once in a while. And then right here is more of my Orchard Cream nasturtiums from Baker Creek. And then over there are just some celebrity tomatoes from Haas Tools. So panning around, we'll, go, we'll start with the melons up here. So I'm super excited about these. These are all of my watermelons and cantaloupes that I'm starting this year. Um, there's 12 cells in each one of these and I put two or three seeds in each one. So we got a lot of watermelons and melons. So in here, um, the other day I bought a watermelon from the store and it was very delicious and I am crazy about seeds so I had to save the seeds and I planted them in there. And then the one thing about the varieties that you buy at the store is the farmers know what the most resilient varieties are because they're depending on those crops to grow. And um, <clears throat> so usually when I grow something from the store, it's a very hardy variety and it does very well. So I don't know what variety that is um, that I'm growing, but it is a typical orange cantaloupe that you would expect to get from the store so the next one is the all sweet watermelon and i got that from uh, i believe those are a fairy morris organic seed from lowe's and then i have a petite yellow watermelon same thing um a 
Barrymore's from um, Lowe's. And then I have this Kajari Maryland from Baker Creek, which you've all heard about before. Small, personal size melon. Never grown any of these before, these varieties here. And then I got a Sierra Gold cantaloupe, which I got from Lowe's. It's probably Fairy Morris, um, which I've never tried. And then uh, back there, the only one that I have tried before is that Sugar Baby watermelon. So that's what we got going on. We should have plenty of melons before too long. And then there's some lettuce that I started in the seed. And these little, these cute little um, whiskey barrel um, planters I got from Dollar Tree, in case you're wondering. And then here's what's left of my peacock broccoli. I have five of those six packs that I up potted and I planted three of them into the garden yesterday. So that's what I got left. So down here, I've got some marigolds, uh, burpees best, French double, mission giants, and petite yellow. And then I have my butterfly peas back there. And then I have um, a row of zinnias here. I got early birds, cactus, candy cane, big tetra, and giants of California. So the giants of Cali California are older seeds, so they're not jumping up as quick. Um, but all the rest of those seeds I got from Lowe's, and they jumped super fast. I just bought them, you know, within a few days of planting them. In the front, we have some old bachelor button seeds and a blue boy bachelor button. And then this is supposed to be evening sun sunflower, which is an old seed. And there is a uh, marigold seed in there that sprouted. And then here I have some old mammoth Russian sunflower seeds and then I got some petunia mix um, I think this is the sparkler mix from Baker Creek and it's coming up as you can see and then I got some coleus that hasn't come up yet some busy bee sunflowers some curly parsley that's coming up right there this is just a um, pepper that I got from Lowe's it's called a Havasu and it says on the tag that it is reminiscent of a Santa Fe Grande, which is one of my favorite peppers. I've been trying to get a hold of more peppers um, and get my seeds to germinate for those. I love those, so I picked that guy up. So down here is all of my peppers, and I also have a um, green dragon um, cucumber. I planted some green dragons, and I planted them too early, and they all got frost and died, so I planted some more just so I can try out the variety. Um, and then we have um, Ford Hook Zucchini, which is some old seed. And then, let's share what this is. Uh, chocolate Habanero, Orange Habanero, Purple Beauty Bells, Ancho Poblanos, Serrano Chilies, Kaleidoscope Bell Peppers, um, Santa Fe Grande, they come up. And, this one is a purple jalapeno. And this is a pimento pepper. And then lemon habanero. And then some green habaneros, some bell peppers, cayenne peppers here. And sure, Hungarian yellow wax. So that's what we got going on there. And then down here, we have um, some beans. So we got a Calico Traveler Lima, which I got from Baker Creek, first time trying it. Uh, Speckled Giant Lima, which I got from my local feed store that I'm trying. And you, some people don't start their beans and peas um, in cells and transplant them, but I do. And I have great success doing it that way. Um, and it, whenever I plant them out, I'm not wasting any space. I'm only planting and making room for stuff that's actually come up. So I got some greasy grits beans. Those are from Baker Creek and they are um, a green bean, a stringless green bean. I'm pretty sure they're a pole type as well, um, but they are um, just supposed to never get tough or anything like that and have a really smooth texture to them. So I'm trying those out for the first time. And then over here I have my dragon tongue bush beans, which are just starting to peak up. 
and those are a favorite. I grow those every year for years. And then I have some sugar daddy snap peas I got to get out in the garden this today. And then down there I have some blawed hide or blaw hide purple pole bean from Baker Creek. So this is, I went looking for a purple pole bean because last year I grew the royalty purple bush beans and they were very, um, they were taken out by mosaic virus immediately. Um, and so they didn't do very well. So I wanted to find a pole type to try this year. And that's what we got from Baker Creek and it had really good reviews. So that's supposed to be a bigger bean but it's also supposed to remain tender. And then we have the Trail of Tears um, pole beans there, which I've grown those here and there, um, just a pack here and a pack there, and mixed in with the rest of my beans um, throughout the years, but those are a pole type. And then I have another container of Greasy Grits beans down there. And then today I'm going to plant some um, some more, some black beans, and um, maybe some pinto beans, and also, um, you know, like I said, plant some, some more, uh, some pumpkins and um, corn. So here's what's going on in the little greenhouse. This is my pink plum celery, which I'm trying to figure out how to separate it and get it. I got to get that separated so that it can grow bigger so I can transplant it and then that's from MI Gardener and I've never grown celery at all um, except for from the start from the grocery store so that's going to be interesting and then up here I just have some purple basil and some magic michael basil and um, some beefsteak tomatoes that are coming up and then down here I've got some flowers I got my pumpkin spice jalapenos some sweet bonnets those are from Baker Creek. Um, Kaleidoscope uh, Mixed Bells, which are from uh, Lowe's. And then I have some Guajilla Peppers um, that I bought from Baker Creek, I believe. And then uh, lemon, some hot lemon peppers from Burpee. And then I have a cayenne pinata mix that's coming up. A couple of Romanesco broccolis back there that I need to get in the garden. And then some flowers. I've got some coleus that has come up, and some dianthus, and some cardinal basil, and some sweet williams. Over here, I've got more sunflowers. I've got more busy bees, more uh, tall orange sunflowers, and then I got the red torch Mexican sunflower. And it's actually a different genus than a sun than the normal. Um, sunflowers but I can't think of the name of it right now it starts with a T and then I got some green night eggplants some scotch bonnets um, so I still have um, one scotch bonnet plant out in the garden and I have picked a fruit off of it before the frost killed it and I planted that fruit and so I would have more for this year and then purple sprouting broccoli and some bees mix and then down here I got some English daisies and some black prints snapdragons. My snapdragons haven't really come up yet um, that I can tell. Maybe there's a couple little ones in there. But yeah, now that we're getting warmer weather, I look for stuff to start growing a lot quicker in the greenhouse. So I will take you around to right here and these are my mixed greens. Um, buckets that I planted here that have radishes and savanna mustard and um, different stuff in there that I just threw in there for picking greens and we'll go look at the garden it's still uh, pretty early it's probably about 8:30. but and it's been wet out here I should have worn my boots because it was flooding a few days ago but we got some stuff accomplished yesterday in the sunshine. So here's what my planters are looking like that I planted up a couple weeks ago. Filling out nicely. And you can see all of my walking irises and amaryllis um, are coming up. I planted some 
my gladiola bulbs yesterday and some uh, some daffodils which I'm probably about three weeks late on playing the daffodils but we'll see what happens if they come up or not so going to the left I cleaned out my bean bed and I have planted that whole row right there is rattlesnake pole beans which are a tried and true favorite um, nothing in this bed or that bed back there but in here I have planted a bunch of carrots those are the Hercules carrots from Haas Tools back there are some Danvers and some turnips um, or rutabagas and um, the chickens actually got in here I hadn't clipped their wings in a while and they jumped over and into here and they dug up those carrots that are right there in that spot so I just put some cucumbers there and the ultimate carrots I planted here I believe I got those from like Lowe's or something and those are complete duds they haven't come up any time that I planted them so I'm, I'll end up planting something else here and then here back here I got some rutabagas and some turnips and some beets and some of that baby chard and then I've nothing here yet my purple cabbage um, is still going along with my curly kale and my scarlet kale and then over here I got my romaine lettuce and my lacinato kale that are still going and then in there I've got some um, watermelon radishes which I'm glad I planted in there because I'll show you in a minute what happened to my other ones um, and then I have my carrots that I planted in the fall over here cauliflower and um, romaine lettuce and then in here we are about to have I've been looking at these plants daily because we're about to have some sugar snap peas but that is what we have here and my kids are so excited they cannot wait until they can eat one. Oh, look at this oh I ain't gonna say nothing about that to them kids because they will pick it before it grows so that's exciting so that is a volunteer tomatillo that I pulled out of my bean bed because I had grown um, tomatillos in that bed there last year so I didn't plant any this year because I figured I would have a lot of volunteers so in here is my gold nuggets that I planted on Christmas Eve from Haas Tools those are carrots and then here's the Yellowstone carrots that I planted on January 17th those were also both of those were from pelleted seed and you can see how good those pelleted seed do so here is my other sugar snap it has been falling since it has grown so much and we've had such, the storms come through here but it should also be putting on some some uh, beans or some sugar snap peas pretty soon and then these two beds are still open this one's uh, ready to be planted I just don't know what I'm gonna end up planting in there yet and then over here I've got my peppers in that pot just jalapenos banana peppers that sort of thing my onions are starting to look good finally got some dill and some strawberries going there and then we'll just come up this way um, the yellow or sorry these are the Pontiac, red Pontiacs certified seed potatoes coming up finally and then the next one down is the white Kennebex certified seed potatoes we planted those on January 17th they're coming up and then got nothing here yet <clears throat> I gotta take that tree out so I can get all the light I can out here and then I have a container of lettuce that is starting to look really good and growing really fast and then these are my Aldi um, yellow Yukon type potatoes that I planted um, back in December and then here are my grow bag potatoes I still haven't planted the other grow bag potatoes yet I just had so much to get in the garden yesterday I couldn't do it all but I did get some good progress so here is my tomato bed that's against my chicken fence and this is what we're looking like here the tomatoes are growing a mile a minute those romas and ruckers that I planted out of my greenhouse are huge 
and I have my onions, white onions and yellow onions planted down there, which are looking great. And then I've got some of my burpee hybrids um, and bonnie hybrids interplanted with these determinant Rutgers and Romas that I have in here. So I should be getting fruit, I'm gonna fertilize as soon as it gets not so wet out here in the next couple of days when it dries out and these um, plants can take up some nutrient, I'm going to be giving them some uh, fish and kelp fertilizer to get them going on their uh, flowering because these guys are ready to flower. I've had them since November. I just babied them through the winter. So these beans here are the, um, they're called a cranberry bean or a borlato bean and they're like a big red and white canelli type bean and I've grown these two years ago I grew, grew a little bit of these but I got some seeds from my neighbor that turned out to be perfectly viable they were really old um, she went to the nursing home and I got ended up with some of her seeds and they've pretty much all come up for me for the most part so I'm excited to grow those and use in soup and chili and everything like that and I'll be um, starting some more of those uh, probably today or tomorrow as soon as I can and then here we have the potatoes I've been rooting around in these potatoes here these are from my old uh, ones that I kept last year that um, when I grew potatoes and planted them I overwintered them in a box but they had started sprouting and were kind of uh, kind of wrinkly and sad looking but I planted them in there and I can see I've been scra I scratched a few new potatoes off of there but I'm gonna let them get a little bit more heat and sunshine and more growth on this green to see if they'll produce some more before I start digging them up so here well we almost skipped over this is a really exciting thing here's another tomato bed so I had planted potatoes in this bed last year and then I planted corn um, and now we got tomatoes in here so I've got some uh, purple um, Cherokee purple some canary yellows some aromas um, Dr. Witchies a celebration and I had planted that celebration over there and it wasn't doing very good so I'm trying to baby it right here with a little bit more more attention to it um, and then down here all this is is one of my my burpee big boy hybrid over there it had a baby growing off the bottom of it out of the bottom and I just plucked it off and put him in the ground to see if he would grow and he's looking a lot better than he did yesterday he's going through phases of being sad and happy so he, when he starts to get some roots going he'll be better so got some chef choice orange some more chef choice orange at the end I have some Chianti red um, sunflowers and then intermixed right here and right here are those um, those cream nasturtiums so now we can move on nothing in this bed right here I want to plant my candy roasters in there and maybe some spaghetti squash and then this is my cucumber bed it's had like seven cucumbers in it for months and um, now it is full of cucumbers and a few onions and I got some a couple of national picklings at the end and then I got some I don't know I guess that's a tag that fell out of my pocket but I got some fairy morris uh, burpless cucumbers I got a few green dragons about maybe one green dragon down there some tasty greens and then some of the let's see what I planted over here market moors so that's what we got going on there and then here is my pea my green peas they are still just trucking along trying to get some warm weather so they can start growing so those are Lincoln peas and the lax in progress peas and then in my broccoli bed I still got I cut off all my heads of broccoli I got a couple left in there that were still growing but the rest of them were trying to sprout so I harvested that last weekend and then right on the edge next to that cattle panel I planted a row of the Chinese long beans the noodle beans and those are the green ones 
And then in the lettuce bed that we have been emptying out and eating, I planted, you see here and there, uh, my peacock broccoli. So that's what's going in there. And then this is some um, savoy cabbage. There's four savoy cabbage in here. And then there's a couple of lettuce that we are still picking out. Um, but the rest of the bed has been planted in the peacock broccoli. And maybe we'll have enough time to get ahead on those. Uh, maybe we won't. We'll just have to see. So, turning around. I got my purple onions and that thing doing good. And then over here, my pepper bed that's next to my tomato bed, which I'll probably end up planting tomatoes in this year. I have planted some of those Calypso cucumbers from Haas Tools. And then there is some munchers down there. Muncher cucumbers. And then there's some of my Bonnie the Best green cabbage that's trying to head. And my other lettuce bed that we just started working on as far as eating. And then I have some more potatoes growing in here. And then in here, these two beds, I have my collards, but I poked in a little teepee in each one of these. And I, I put in some Kentucky Wonder pole beans to grow up in that little corner. And then in here, I still got my purple um, cabbage. And I have some of that premium crop broccoli that's starting to head up. And then back there I planted some peas, the easy peasy peas. These are green shelling peas um, that I got from Lowe's. And those are the first time that I've ever tried that variety, but they're going all the way down. And then I got my green or my Bonnie's Best green cabbage there with the <clears throat> with the broccoli thrown in there in the front. And then right there I've planted some Kentucky Wonder pole beans and then there's my chives and then coming up to the front we'll see what has happened here we got some more brock or some more cabbage i mean lettuce some more lettuce going right there and then these are all sugar snap peas that i planted all along there there's a couple of them that need i'm sorry not sugar snap peas but little marvel peas green shell and peas um so they got they got thin over here because that area flooded a little bit because the chickens actually got into my watermelon radishes and tore all that up and those peas that were planted there too and tore up some of my spinach and a few of my uh, savannah mustard so that's the damage that they did they tore up my carrots a little bit took out my radishes and a few of my mustards and most of my spinach so I'll be replanting that so in here with the peas I've got a German Queen from Lowe's and then I got a Chef's Choice Orange and I think that's a celebration that I have planted in there with it and 